Hello and Assalamualaikum, my name is Najib Nagisai Fulbari, I'm from 2 ay one Stroke 2. So I will explain about the introduction and background for our group assignment which is uh, complete about the wage, minimum wage in Malaysia. On March 19, 2022, the Malaysian Prime Minister announced that the national minimum wage will be raised from 1,200 to 1,500 ringgit. Following that, on February 27, 2022, the minimum wage for the 2022 was exact, bringing the new minimum salary into effect on May 1, 2022. Employers from several industries have reacted strongly to the decision to raise the national minimum wage, with some applauding it and others objecting, objecting and disagreeing with it owing to the potential for far reach effects on Malaysian employment and the economic environment. Section 2 of the National Wage Consultation Council Act 2011 defines the minimum wage as the basic wages to be or as decided under Section 23. According to Section 22 of the NWCCA 2011, the Council is obligated to provide a proposal to the Government through the Minister of Human Resources at such time as the Minister of Human Resources may choose based on the activities done under Section 21. The first, the minimum wage rates. The second, the coverage of the recommended minimum wages rates according to sectors, types of employment, and regional areas. The non-application of the recommended minimum wages rates, which rates and coverage to coverage to any sectors, types of employment, and the regional areas or any person or class of persons. The common cement of the minimum wage order and the different dates for the con common cement of the minimum wage order to different sectors, types of employment, and regional areas or to different persons or classes of persons. And lastly, other matters relating to the minimum wage, including the implementation of the recommended minimum wage rates and coverage. If the government accepts the council proposal, the Minister of Human Resources is obligated to make a minimum wage order on the preceding items as agreed to or decided by the government by an announcement in the Federal Government Gazette under Section 23 of the NWCCA of 2011. Starting in 2012, the NWCCA 2011 mandates that the minimum wage level be changed every two years. Since the NWCCA's introduction in 2011, the minimum wage has risen from its initial benchmark of 900 per month for Peninsula Malaysia and 800 ringgit per month for Sabah, Sarawak and the Federal Territory of Labuan in 2012 to the new figure of 1,500 ringgit per month for the whole country. The next part is issues that are relevant to the case. With the current cost, its products and the recovery of the economy, the discussion over the minimum wages has flared up once again. On the one hand, the Nation Trades Union Congress has encouraged government to implement implement the 1,500 ringgit minimum wages as soon as possible to help employees to deal with growing household costs. Small and medium businesses are still recovering from the economic shock caused by COVID-19 as well as the recent catastrophic floods. The influence of the rate is dependent on the cost of living in different parts of the country. The minimum wage issue is an issue that is very common, so I will show three countries and their issue. First, we start with the United States. The United States uh, issue arises when, when they are splitting uh, between high wages and low wages. This happened because uh, of the expansion of service sector. Next, we go to Canada. Canada is the issue with uh, different uh, wages according to the age, like in 2010, teenagers get $10.25, and while in 2014, teenagers get uh, between $10.25 uh, and $12, uh, when young adults get from $12 to $15. So we go to the Malaysia. The, uh, Malaysia is an issue about the increases of the minimum wages. Like uh, in 2013, uh, Peninsula Malaysia uh, state that a minimum age is 900 ringgit per month and East Malaysia is 800 ringgit per month. In 2016, Sabah, Sarawak and Federal Territory Labuan state that 920 ringgit per month for the minimum wages and for Peninsula Malaysia is 1,000 per month. Next, problem and concern. This, the minimum wages must be raised. It is because the cost of living has recently risen. Next, because of poor employees demand the raise, as a result, contract workers also demand wage increase too. That may, uh, there are certain workers design and look for a better alternatives. Second, employers are unable to implement a high minimum wages. Uh, the wage is 15,000 ringgit, which is a uh, small medium sized enterprise cannot afford to pay it because the, uh, their overhead costs will increase and make their bankrupt. Also, uh, Malaysian Employer Federation said many businesses went bankrupt as a result of the pandemic and massive blood, blood that occurred two years ago. So, to keep their business from going bankrupt, they will raise the goods that will make us more suffer. Assessment to case settlement. How do they handle the conflict? The debate on minimum wages has heated up against the mixed rising prices of goods and the emergence of businesses from the location. The last time the minimum wage rate was raised was through the presentation of the 2020 budget, when the government agreed to increase 100 from 1.1k to 1.2k per month. It is based on the Minimum Wage Order 2020, Section 23 of the National Wage Consultative Council Act 2011. The Malaysian Trade Union Congress has urged the government to accelerate the implementation of the minimum wage at 1.5k to help workers cope with their rising household expenditures. 
The Federation of Malaysian Manufacturers generally concerned about an immediate increase to 1.5K but are receptive for a gradual increase under the current minimum wages review to quantum, quantum to be decided by the National Wages Consultative Council. The government can play a role in enabling businesses to pay higher wages by defraying the cost of the increase through tax incentive over the next one to two years. That said, the government and employers will need to have a longer term plans to address rising wages. In integrative negotiation or win-win approach, both parties achieve or exceed their goals in a value-creating process. Both parties look for solutions that benefit each side, integrating the goals into one main approach. An added benefit of this approach is that it creates a positive connection for future negotiations. In this situation, to hold discussion sessions between the government, Malaysian Employees Federation and the Malaysian Trade Union Congress is a good move in assuring harmony between the two parties, considering the action is like a win-win situation. Because if only the employee benefits while the employer feels burdened, it will definitely have a bad effect towards industry. Hence, in realizing the minimum wage, it must require the views of various parties. The thoughts of industry movers, unions, economists and those involved are invaluable in finding comprehensive solutions in order to help the government make the right decisions. My name is Nur Alia Baradi Binti Irahman. My metric number is B0801039. I'm going to explain why this strategy was chosen to resolve the conflict. There are seven strategies. The first strategy is clearly defined goals. Specific goals can also help you make stronger and clear argument. For example, we need to know the, the specific outcome that the company will provide to us or in line with the position we apply for. We also need to know how much the value outcome we are targeting. From there, we can avoid conflict between employers and employees. The second strategy is consider the other parties' background. Negotiations can make can sometimes involve the international business or, or individual from these different cultural backgrounds. Focus on the individuals you are directly resolving a conflict with, with and how you both can mutually benefit from the process. The third strategy is be proactive. In other words, proactive employees can act, take responsibility and make decisions to fulfill the company's objective. Furthermore, proactive workers do not wait for chance to present themselves. They create their own opportunities at the first hint of a, of a problem. They engage the conversation and express their point of view as well as how they can contribute to the endeavor. Every action of a proactive person is performed to achieve a goal they have set out for themselves. The fourth strategy is know your goal. Every action of a proactive person is performed to achieve a goal they have set out for themselves. Next, use established forums for negotiating conflicts. Regardless of your goal, it can be helpful for your workplace to have a design time to discuss issues that require negotiated solutions. For more private or sensitive conflict negoti negotiation, negotiations, you may want to approach the other party separately or ask a human resources representative to act as a medi medi mediator. After that, be flexible with time. How you, how you use time in a negotiation often reflects what you wish to achieve. In some cases, being firm with a resolution deadline can en encourage a more direct and productive converse conversation. Other conflict negotiations can take time to discuss various points and counterpoints. Being willing to meet on multiple occasions over a longer period of time might produce a better negotiate negoti outcome. Last but not least, focus on creating value. Negotiations may begin because of conflicting position, but a creative value-oriented mindset can produce win-win results that leave both parties satisfied. When considering the other party, know where your interests overlap and what your similarities are. Consider what trade office you might be willing to accept or propose to the other party that could benefit both sides or the deal. That's all for me. Thank you. Hi and Assalamualaikum. My name is Nurul Syarah Liana binti Muhammad Najib. I will present to you about reflection. The lecture note I choose is preparation and planning for negotiation is get agreement on the agenda of the issue to be discussed. Employees need to prioritize their goals, such as think is it better to stay silent and not fight back regarding the minimum wage issue or uphold justice for their own benefit. Besides, SWOT analysis is needed in this conflict to settle the problem of minimum wage issue. Next, one of the negotiation strategy that I use is win-lose. Employee will act aggressively to achieve their goals through competitive negotiation. Lastly, I choose change the line up in closing offer because if you are having difficult deals at your working place, you should consider bringing in replacement such as change the job or choose a better working place for you. The second reflection is the important knowledge through the study case. Negotiation skills provide a variety of essential benefits that can make all the difference in a myriad of different circumstances. For instance, knowing how to negotiate can firstly help you build confidence. Second, Ensure you are getting a fair deal. Negotiating always involves set, seeing the value of situation and looking for a balanced solution that benefits you as well as everyone else. Thirdly, find the middle ground. 
and for increasing your ability to listen. Active listening is a critical life skill. Negotiating can help you tone the ability to hear and respond to others in a thoughtful manner. Fifth, it can develop your interpersonal skill. Negotiating properly always requires inherent respect for the other parties involved as well as the ability to properly interact with them. Lastly, it can hone your strategic planning. Complex negotiation can require things like research, planning, logistic, organization, and forecasting. By learning to negotiate, you are not just develop a one-dimensional skill for words interaction. You are cultivating a variety of talents and ability that can serve you in many areas of life. So that's all from me. Thank you.